Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be learning about absolute advantage. With that said, let's get into it. So the easiest way to learn something is definitely with an example problem, and that's what we'll be looking at today. So here we have two countries, the first being Canada and the second being the United States. And in this example, we're saying that they can produce one of two types of athletes. They can either produce hockey athletes and Canada can produce 225 players, or the United States can produce 288 players. Alternatively, instead of making hockey players, or in conjunction with making hockey players, they can also make basketball players. Now, Canada can only make 36 players. However, the United States can make 270 players. And we are assuming that the length of time to make these numbers is nine years for both countries. So how you would read this is that in nine years, Canada can either produce 225 hockey players or 36 basketball players. And in the same nine years, the United States can either produce 288 hockey players or 270 basketball players. So with the example set up, let's take a look at our first type of advantage, and that is absolute advantage. Now, as a reminder, absolute advantage is looking at which country is more productive at producing each type of player. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, how do you value who's more productive? Well, there's a nice, easy formula for it, and it looks like this. Productivity is equal to the amount of output divided by the amount of inputs. This is because someone who's more productive is going to be able to create more output with fewer inputs. And so the denominator will be lower and the numerator will be larger. Let's take a look at the productivity of Canada first. So the productivity of Canada in the production of hockey players is 225 players, that's the amount of output, divided by nine years, that's the input. And this, of course, if you do the division, is 25 players per year, nice and easy. What about the productivity of basketball players for Canada? Well, here we have 36 players per nine years, and that's four players per year, and so this is the productivity of basketball players. What about the United States? Well, the productivity for hockey players is 288 players for nine years or 32 players per year. And then finally, for basketball players, the productivity of the United States is 270 over nine years, which is 30 players per year. Now, we said that the absolute advantage is when a country is more productive at producing. So first, we're going to look at the productivity of hockey players for the two countries. Now, obviously, comparing 25 and 32, 32 is greater. So we would say that the United States is more productive at producing hockey players. Now, if we compare four players to 30 players, when we're talking about the productivity of basketball players, again, you can obviously see that 30 is greater than four. And therefore, the United States are also more productive at producing basketball players. Now, to summarize everything we literally just said, the United States are more productive at producing both hockey players and basketball players, and therefore, the United States have an absolute advantage in the production of both types of players. If you found this video helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.